got a pretty interesting video today, and it starts with a pretty strange question, and that is, what do Albert Einstein, the very famous physicist, and James Garfield, the former president of the United States from the late 1800s have in common? And that is that they both wrote their own proofs to the Pythagorean theorem. And in this video, we're gonna look at each of those proofs. So we'll look at the proof that Albert Einstein wrote when he was in grade school, and then we'll also look at the proof that James Garfield wrote when he was in the House of Representatives. Okay, so let's maybe get a triangle on the board so that we can look at Albert Einstein's proof. Okay, so we got our right triangle on the board. So notice it's a triangle A, B, C, where the right angle is at vertex C, and then the opposite sides are labeled little a, so that's the side length there. It's opposite vertex a, little b, which is opposite vertex b, and little c, which is opposite vertex c. So Einstein's proof relies on adding a new line segment into this picture and then making some arguments about similar triangles. So what we'll do is we'll draw a line segment from c to line segment a, b, that intersects line segment AB at a right angle. And then while we're at it, I'm gonna label this angle measure alpha and this angle measure beta. Okay, so let's put that on the board. Okay, so I added my line segment along with this point D. So that means this line segment CD intersects line segment BA at a 90 degree angle. Furthermore, I call this angle up here alpha, so in other words, it has measure alpha, and this angle down here has measure beta. Now I wanna notice that triangle ABC, which is our starting triangle, has angle measures alpha, beta, 90 degrees. But let's look at the angle measures of the other triangles. Well, notice that triangle C, D, B, or maybe B, C, D, however you wanna write it, has angle measure beta, 90 degrees, and then a yet unknown angle. Because angles of a triangle add to 180 degrees, we know that this has to also have angle measure alpha, given that 90 plus beta plus alpha is 180. So that's the only thing that can go right here. This guy right here is angle measure alpha. And then via a very, very similar argument, this angle measure here is angle measure beta. So now that tells us that triangle BCD has angles alpha, beta, 90 degrees, and triangle ACD also has angle measure alpha, beta, 90 degrees. So just to reiterate, that's the largest triangle, small sub-triangle here, and this sub-triangle here, which is a bit larger. Those all have angle measures alpha, beta, 90 degrees. But then we know by a similarity theorem, which is well known, the angle, angle, angle theorem. So let's maybe write that by the angle, angle, angle theorem. That tells us that each of these triangles is similar. So we have triangle ABC is similar to triangle BCD, which is similar to triangle ACD. So that tells us something about the proportion of their side lengths. So now let's see where we can go from there. I'm gonna go ahead and name the length of this line segment CD some variable, which will be useful later. So I'm gonna maybe name this variable length X. And then I'll use my similarity, similarity condition to find the length of BD as well as the length of AD. Well, let's notice that the length of line segment BD divided by X is the same thing as A divided by B. Now, these look like they have the same or close to the same lengths, but suffice it to say, this one is a little bit shorter. Okay, so let's maybe write that down. We have line segment BD divided by X is the same thing as A over B. So now we can move some things around and we see that line segment BD has length A over B times X. 
Okay, so that's good to know. Now we can do a similar thing over here. So notice that x divided by line segment AD, or the length of line segment AD, is going to be equal to A over B as well. But now moving some things around, that tells us that the length of line segment AD is equal to B over A times X. Okay, so now we can insert these into our picture. So we know that this length right here is A over B times X, and then this length right here is B over A times X. Now next we wanna solve for X in terms of A and B. And we can do that easily by calculating the area of the large triangle two different ways. So I wanna notice that the area of our large triangle, which is triangle ABC, is also equal to the area of the sum of these two triangles. So that's gonna be the area of triangle BCD plus the area of triangle ACD, just because those partition that triangle. But I can just multiply this whole equation by two, which is actually a little bit helpful given that it'll reduce the one half out of the equation for the area of a triangle. So let's multiply this by two. But now twice the area of triangle ABC is just A times B, and then twice area BCD well, let's see, BCD, that will be A over B times X times X. So we have A over B times X squared. And then twice area ACD, well, that'll be B over A times X times X. So that'll be B over A times X squared. Next, I'd like to maybe reduce out my fractions. So I can take this and multiply it by AB. And that's gonna give me a squared, B squared on the left-hand side of the equation. And then I'll have A squared plus B squared times X squared on the right-hand side of the equation, where I factored that X squared out. Now I can solve for my unknown, which is X. But in fact, we're just gonna need this squared, so let's solve it as X squared. And we see that X squared is equal to A squared, B squared over a squared plus B squared. Okay, so now let's bring that up and then we're pretty much home free for Einstein's proof. So, so far using similar triangles in area, we determined that X squared was equal to A squared B squared over A squared plus B squared, where X was the length of this line, which is normal to AB. So now we wanna finish off our Pythagorean theorem proof and that is that c squared is the same thing as a squared plus b squared. But we also know that c is the length of line segment ab, and that has been decomposed into this length right here and this length right here. Okay, so let's maybe use that fact. So here we have c squared, and so that's gonna be the length of ad, but that's b over a times x plus the length of BD, but that's gonna be A over B times X. And then we do that quantity squared like that. But now let's do two things. Let's factor in X out of the right-hand side of these parentheses. Let's also find a common denominator. We can easily find a common denominator as the product AB. That will give us B squared over AB. And then here, this is A squared over A. Maybe let's go ahead and fa factor the AB out as well. But when we factor it out, we have to square it given the fact that we've got these parentheses squared. So after factoring things out, we have X squared over A squared B squared times A squared plus B squared. And then the whole thing is squared. Now let's insert our value for X squared and that'll be a squared b squared over a squared plus b squared times a squared plus b squared all squared over a squared b squared. So just to reiterate, this a squared b squared went here, and all of this is coming from our x squared term. But now we can see that a bunch of stuff cancels. This a squared b squared cancels with this a squared b squared,
And then this a squared plus b squared cancels this exponent down to a one, and we're left with a squared plus b squared. But looking at the extreme left and right hand side of the equation, we see that that's exactly what we wanted to show to prove the Pythagorean theorem. So let's maybe clean this up and we'll look at James Garfield's proof. Okay, so now we're gonna look at James Garfield's proof of the Pythagorean theorem. So we've got our right triangle again. So I've labeled it just the same way that we did at the start of Einstein's proof. So this approach involves cloning this right triangle and then patching it together into a trapezoid and then measuring the area of that trapezoid two different ways. Okay, so maybe I'll start off by moving this triangle over here and adding an extra copy of it. Okay, so we cloned our triangle and then rotated it up here and fixed point B prime equal to point A. So A prime, B prime, C prime is the new like cloned triangle. So notice it has the same side lengths and the right triangle is in the same spot. So from here what we want to do is add a line segment from point A prime to B and then we have a trapezoid which is shaded now in blue and red that we can find the area of. And I wanna point out really quickly that we know that this is a 90 degree angle. And how do we know that? Well, this angle right here and this angle right here are supplementary. In other words, they add to 90 degrees. And we know that because they're the opposite triangles or the opposite angles from the original triangle. But this is a straight line, meaning that this whole thing is 180 degrees, so what's left over is 90 degrees. So now let's calculate the area of this trapezoid two different ways. So I'll just write area trapezoid, and then do the calculation two different ways. And actually, just like we did before, we're gonna do twice the area of the trapezoid just to clear the two that happens in the denominator. So I wanna start off by just recalling the formula for the area of a trapezoid. So that's gonna be 1 half times the sum of the bottom branch and the top branch, so that would be A plus B, times the height, but that's also A plus B here. Since we put the two there, it cancels that half down and we get A plus B quantity squared. And so that side of the calculation is just done by the standard formula for the area of a trapezoid. Now let's calculate the area of the trapezoid by looking at the sub triangles. So we've got this triangle right here in blue, this triangle right here, which is congruent and also blue, and then this isosceles right triangle, which is red. I wanna notice that I've multiplied by two, so I clear all the denominators from my one half base times height, and I'll have a times B plus A times B. So that's gonna be from this blue one and this blue one, and then plus C squared. So that's gonna be from this red one. And just to reiterate, I canceled my half by multiplying by two. Okay, but now all that's left is to do some algebra. I can multiply this out and I get A squared plus two AB plus B squared. And then I can make some cancellation. I can cancel this two A with this AB plus AB and I'm left with a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which is exactly what we wanted. Okay, so maybe post in the comments, which of these proofs did you like better? Was Einstein's proof more aesthetically pleasing or was Garfield's proof more aesthetically pleasing? Or maybe you have the preference of a totally different proof. So post in the comments, and that's a good place to stop.